Okay, so I was asked to do a little job, well I offered to do a little job to help um, Keith out with a project. He needs to put webbing, like this kind of webbing on the top, on a little character that he's doing. Now he does these little military models like here. So I need to put a little webbing on here. It'd be nice to have this little edging as well, so I think I'll do that. Um, he hasn't asked me to do that, but I think I'll do it anyway. Um, so here we go we got this he's masked this area out so i'm going to show you how to do this really quickly and cleanly now there was some posts about using uvs and yeah that is the case we could use the uvs and we could extract this piece and then put webbing across it but i think it'd be nice to have actually a nice clean piece to go on there that can then be boolean together for an actual character so i've got the file i'm going to open that up and um have a look at it so here we go, we've got the little tool here. Oops, just going to edit. Now uh, let's have a look at the sub tools. Uh, I don't really need any of this stuff apart from this. Okay, so looks like this is a straight DynaMesh. Let me just, okay, that's the area he wants done. So, let's go and do this so um, to be able to put the edging on this and stuff I'm gonna do something a little bit different remember that shape okay right so I'm go I've got this selected in here and what I'm gonna do he's actually got a separate piece so I'm gonna duplicate this just in case he needs this piece and with that masked area I'm gonna press Control W to make it mask okay so it looks like there's different resolutions going on uh, not sure why but uh, doesn't matter okay so uh, gonna create some clean topology for this first of all I think that's the the best method so I'm gonna go and go to a Z sphere and I'm gonna create clean geometry for this I'm gonna go into topology and we're gonna go to rigging sorry select mesh I'm gonna select this mesh here and I'm going to go into topology I'm gonna go into edit mode and I'm hopefully, I'm gonna be able to turn this on. Is this symmetrical? Yeah, it looks like it is. Okay, let's start to draw some of this stuff up. So, cause I'm in edit mode, I can click off, and I can start to click around. So I'm trying to keep it fairly evenly quadded, uh, although it doesn't matter cause we're just gonna do a projection across and should be good. I'm going to start here now. I'm going to come up and to about there. Oh, it doesn't look like it's symmetrical. But it's all right. I can move that later. Rather work symmetrically. Come across here. So, yeah, we could do a mesh extraction here and then we could um, clean it up using Z Remesher. I think it's going to want it going over the top here. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to blast through this. I'll just pause the video whilst I work my way around. Okay, guys, this is what I'm left with. So I've just gone around that poly group that was masked and um, I actually need to bring it into the middle because I think it goes across the back as well. So I'm just gonna bring this across to here and just finish it off. Okay, let's have a look at it now. I'm gonna go into adaptive skin. I'm gonna turn density to one. I'm gonna turn DynaMesh to zero and I'm just gonna press A or preview it here. Now this is what it's going to give me uh, that's good enough I'm going to make that a adaptive skin now so you're going to see your adaptive skin is up here so now I'm going to return back to the tool and come out of this and we're going to append this new piece in which is this skin here which you can see now this is low res what I can do with this piece is I can use the Z modeler brush go over it I'm going to do all polys Q mesh I'm going to click here and I'm going to drag this out this will create the depth now I know that he wants it thicker than it actually is so that should be fine okay now I'm going to basically poly group it now you're going to notice that uh, it creates three different poly groups when you're doing this 
Um, I'm definitely going to want an edge to this. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go poly loop, poly group in here. And I'm going to pull this down so that I give myself a little edge. I'm going to do the same inside here as well. Something like that. I'm just doing this because I think it will look better. Um, let's pull that down. Okay, now I can pull that out. Should be doing the same the other side. Yep. I'm going to click that once to have the same extraction. Okay, so now I've got separate poly groups. I'm going to press Control Shift on here. And I want to go down because some of the poly groups are the same. Because I've pressed Control Shift on this piece, any separated pieces will be poly grouped separately when I do the auto group. So now I can click on this bit. I can click it all back. Click on this bit. Control Shift. Sorry, Control Shift. I should say Control Shift on this bit. Control Shift drag. Control W to make that one poly group. Control Shift, and I've got two poly groups. Okay, on this low res piece. So now what I can do is I can come into UV Master. I can unwrap by poly groups. I've left symmetry on and I'm going to click unwrap. Okay, we're going to look at that now. Notice I've got no subdivision levels yet. I'm now I'm going to flatten this out and we should have something like that. So it's wrapping around the front. I actually want it to wrap around the back. So I'm going to go unflatten. I'm going to enable what's called control painting. So I'm going to go into this and turn this off. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to enable control painting and I'm going to say attract and I want the seam to be attracted down the back that would be where the webbing attaches or actually down here because it's less an obvious area so I want the seams to be anywhere around here okay and then I want to go into protect and I want all this front face to be protected and the top of the shoulders so that's minimal warpage on these areas this is why I'm running protection over it okay now that's done I should now be able to do another unwrap with that so it'll track the seams around this area and it will try to keep this bit flat I'm going to do it by poly group symmetry I'm going to click unwrap now I'm going to go and I'm going to flatten the UVs and I should have got a cut on the back okay that's good go back into the plugin unflatten this I can press control D to subdivide this up so I'm going to get I'm up to about subdivision level 4 I'm going to take it up to subdivision level 5 let's turn this on press the shift okay that's the torso there okay I can go into this now I've got symmetry turned on still so I'm just going to drag this out using move something like that move it up a bit here and you know basically you can move this however you want run a little bit smooth around here it's just a bit sharp it's going to solo I'm just tapping it so printing this they're gonna be fine remember this has got UVs on it I'm gonna make a little tweak here looks a little bit wrong okay so what I'm gonna do now is I can apply a um, grid across this really easily still got the poly groups yep I'm down to subdivision level one and now I've got this piece I can actually use surface noise so what I've done is I've created this little uh, cross it's just a white cross but it's tileable okay so it's just a square it's just basically a cross and then I rotated it 45 degrees and then pulled it out and it just gives me a square so I'll supply this file to you anyway but uh, let's see what happens when I use this now you could use the noise um, maker but I tend to use alphas it's easier now we got UVs on this piece 
we can actually use it. So if I come in here, and uh, I could use noise plugin there. You can do some amazing things with that. Let me just demonstrate this to you. This isn't part of this, but I just want to show you. If I do something like snake skin, click OK, uh, and then I take the plugin size down on here and I increase the strength of this, you're going to see like a snake skin uh, forming on the surface, which is pretty cool, you know? It's got a mix of the basic noise with it. So if I put this on zero, uh, you're going to see it nice and clean like that. So this is this is kind of what we're doing really. So I'm going to turn that off anyway, and we're going to make sure we're on uh, UVs. Actually, I could put it on 3D, try it out with this. I'm going to take this strength back down, and I'm going to come into alpha, and I'm going to grab the grid, that little cross. Now there it is there, that's what we want. I'm going to take this alpha size down to about the size we need it. Now, I don't want it too small, because like you said, it's for a miniature. So if I put it in something like that, and I click OK, it's going to appear on the model like this. Now it isn't actually active, and look at this distortion round here, and this is basically because we haven't turned 3D on. If I turn 3D on, and then I reduce this alpha size down, just increase this strength as well, so you can see it, and it should be a bit better. Like that. Looks like we've got a crease there, but it doesn't matter. Should be okay. Now it's a little bit more even all over see now what we can do is we can apply that as a mask and then you can pull it out so if I do mask by noise you're going to get this now the reason it's all bad like this is because I haven't got enough resolution so I'm going to need to divide this maybe a couple more times and now I can apply it by noise it's gonna be a lot sharper there we go so now I don't want these side bits to have this webbing on. So I'm going to press Control Shift on this part, and then I'm going to Control Shift and drag. And now I'm going to mask this area out. And Control Shift. And now it's only in those pieces. Actually, I want this inverse. So I'm going to Control Shift to inverse it. Then I'm going to click on these pieces here, mask these out, click, and there we go. So we got that. So I can invert this now, and I've got the webbing. Now, we could pull this straight out of here. So if I invert it, control click to invert, by the way. Uh, if I wanted to, I could go into deformation, and then I could go to something like inflate, and I could inflate this up. And it would give you a fairly good thing, probably what you want. But um, a better way of doing it is to invert the mask like this and do an extraction because then we're gonna get something really clean. So if I go to extract, and I'm gonna leave it on this setting, and I'm gonna click the extract button. I'm gonna see how far, it'll just extract this mask out. I will see how clean a result we get. It's gonna take a little bit of time because it's up to quite a lot of polygons. It's up to subdivision level seven. So it doesn't look too bad. Okay, let's see. Oh, it's not so bad. Uh, a little bit too thick. I'm going to go to 0 0.01. Hit enter. 0 0.01 in here. I'm actually going to turn smoothing down to about 2 to keep, try and keep it sharper. I also want to check my model that's really sharp on here. Control, Alt, click on the mask in to sharpen it. We want it really sharp, yeah? Now let's do an extraction. So we have a little bit of a seam here, um, unfortunately, but it's, you know, it's so small. Here we go. Oh, yeah, that's not bad, but it's not what I want. I'm gonna go 0 0.05. Let's try this.
Okay, let me accept that. And if I go round, smooth this over. In fact, what I'll do is I'll use the deformation smooth so that it smooths it all evenly. Let's just start to smooth this out. And you've got that kind of webbing effect. Now it's up to you which you want to choose, whether you want to actually extract it out of here, um, which you could. I would suggest that maybe you turn layers on when you do this, so you've got control. So if I do a layer now in here, it will be recording, and then I can go to deformation, and I can inflate it like four. Let's do four again. I've got something like that. I can now unmask it. Back down to layers, turn layer recording off, now what you can do is you can dial this back see that I can even invert it so if I turn it up there I can also override it and push it even further yet yeah, once you're happy with the result you can then bake it so what I'll do is I'll do a duplicate of this one so you've got you've got all the variations so let me just rename this I call it layers on okay and then I'll duplicate it and I'll bake this one in. So this will be the baked top rename. Baked top, okay. And then I can come down and I can bake this layer in. So at the moment it's still got control, but if I click bake, it will bake this. So now that's set. So you've got a variety of different things. You could even use this one with that one if you wanted to. I'll turn that one off. The choice is yours. That gives quite a good effect. You know, you might want to move that arm piece up, but this demonstrates the technique. You might even want to take that top and push it down, push it back through. Using move, you could push that back. Could even move the arms up. like it's all intersecting I could turn that one on you might need to make some changes to that one if you're if you're using both and you're booting them together you know you get the idea so that is it so I'll send you this back this file um, with this video and um, hopefully that will be of help to you so let me just save this out and send you the video